uh, kind of a game of uh, contrasts. Uh, we came out and we were the aggressor uh, from the opening tip and uh, I believe it was 11-2 start and uh, felt real good about us. But then uh, at the end of the first quarter, we started selling for long threes and not finding the ball at the free throw line and certainly didn't have any drives. Uh, the fourth quarter, the third quarter, uh, even parts of the second, we were still able to find, uh, and they were basically giving us the jump shot at the free throw line. And uh, Laya knocked those down. I believe Precious and Amaya made one of those each. Um, but you know, when we caught it at the free throw line, we needed to rip and drive it and get to the rim. And we certainly didn't do that tonight because when you shoot four free throws for the entire game, uh, that tells that you had some passivity. And uh, we certainly didn't help ourselves uh, by not driving the ball more. And uh, you know, I, I really do believe that we're the best six and eleven team in the country. We've been in just about every single game uh, outside of the first week of the season uh, where we've lost uh, by a couple possessions or less and uh, we're still trying to correct things. Uh, we've got a, a very young group with some very experienced veterans uh, who are playing through uh, some significant uh, health issues and uh, I'm still very proud of them and I come to work literally every day excited about the positivity around those kids, and I know that they come to practice with the same. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know I said in the locker room today is almost like a tipping point. Um, it, you know we can't continue to lose close games, and we can't continue to have passivity uh, at times. Uh, we have to be the aggressor for 40 minutes, not for 28 or 30, and uh, that was tonight. You mentioned settling in your opener, Dan. Just how much do you think settling has become maybe too much? of a consistent factor in deciding some of these close games? You know, I, I, you know it, it, ha excuse me, it happens. Other teams are going to do that to you, and we're going to do that to other teams. You're not going to – it's very hard to play 40, 40 minutes with the, gas, with the pedal on the gas uh, and no breaks. Um, you know, tonight I, I was really disappointed on how we put the ball above our head uh, when we caught it on the arc. And we, we didn't look to drive it into attack space for short jumpers. Uh, we didn't attack space. We would just swing it around the lane. Or, uh, you know, so, like, to answer your question, like, these are correctable things in our eyes. And we have enough talent to do that. You know, I just got done talking with Tammy, the Rhode Island coach, who I love to death and have a lot of respect for. Um, and she goes, Dan, you could easily be 4-1. and one. You could easily be, your record could be easily reversed. And I, she would tell me if she'd tell me the truth. She's she's straightforward, and I agree with her. You know, we're we're close. We just got to fix some of these things. And and I don't know if it's always passivity. You know, we were at VCU and we lost in overtime, and our kids executed the game plan to a T. We wanted them to be able to beat us one on one and take tough twos. Well, they made twenty six baskets, I believe, on one or two assists. So they beat us. And we executed our game plan. Sometimes that's going to happen. Um, but it's, you know, a missed box out here. It's a missed defensive assignment there. And uh, for us tonight, a little bit of it was being passive and only getting to the free throw line four times. When you say your team's the best 6-11 and 11 team in the country, how important do you feel that it is that your team believes that and they continue to have that mentality and that belief in each other and the family? I do. I, I think they do. Um, It's a, it's a locker room that's incredibly disappointed with a lot of tears in the eyes. A lot, of, a lot of people, including me, are not used to being this way and having this type of record. But every practice that we've had in the last three weeks has been good to outstanding. Uh, I mean, vocal, energy, effort, enthusiasm, all there. Uh, getting in the gym on their own, it's there. Uh, all the signs are there for there to be a correction. And so, you know, you hope tonight's the tipping point where it hurts so much that you're not, you're going to find a way to not lose. You're going to find that way to not lose. And uh, we'll see when we go to St. Louis on Saturday. When you look at the scoring tonight, it was pretty widespread collectively, just it just seemed like when the scoring happened, there was that one player that was scoring. It was kind of tough to get two people going at once for consistent stretches. Is that 
something maybe you're noticing and how correctable do you think that could be? Is it sets? Is it what they were doing? What do you attribute that to? Today it was what they did uh, by playing the zone and then it was us by not attacking the zone and setting, settling for free throw line jumpers and just putting, like I had mentioned, putting the ball over our head and being passive, not being shot ready. Uh, when we attack space, we got 12 to 15 footers or we gnashed it, which is dribbling the ball across the lane like uh, Meg McConnell did and find, found someone on the weak side. So, you know, these are correctable things. Um, this is not an issue of talent, if you ask me. This is an issue of correcting things and continuing to remain positive uh, as we dig out of this. With uh, Elmore, Dan, what did you notice? Maybe Rody was talking about maybe there was a mismatch and they took advantage of it. Just what did you see out of 21 that maybe allowed her to find some space and some freedom? She was in the lane a long time. And if you're allowed to stay in the lane that long and pivot, 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 and then make a move, that's advantage for them. And... Uh, they were smart in posting her up. Uh, she was aggressive on her post ups. We needed, she created the contact and was the aggressor, and then we would become aggressive. We needed to be the aggressor and not allow her to post so low. And, and frankly, she never passed out of it. So, you know, the, blame me for that. We should have doubled that after, after that happened, and, and we didn't do that. Um, you know, it's, it, it, they're smart. I mean, like, you know, they, they couldn't get their other guys going as much as I think they would like. Uh, you know, even though, you know, number two, I, I don't know how to say their names, so I'm just going to call them by their numbers, number two and tw 31, uh, you know, maybe didn't score quite as much or needed a lot of attempts to get there. Uh, so, you know, to Tammy's credit, she went and isolated 21. Thanks, Dan. That's all you guys got?